Hello and welcome to our presentation. I'm Heather Valley and I'm here with Hannah Rogers. We're from Duke University's Learning Innovation Team and we're going to discuss the development of a new asynchronous communication tool. As the use of online education tools increased to meet the needs of learners during the current pandemic, some new pain points became apparent. To address an unexpected hole in our teaching technology portfolio, Duke University decided to create a new online discussion platform to facilitate compelling 21st century learning conversations. By leveraging its commitment to learning innovation, dedication to open source software, deep engagement with the Duke community, expertise in user-informed design, and strong partnership with Longsight, a trusted education technology vendor, Duke piloted the new tool named Conversations in this fall semester. Here's our full team from Duke Learning Innovation, Duke Creative and User Experience, and Longsight. But as you'll see, the range of people providing input is much broader. Sakai acts as Duke's major learning management system. As an open source LMS, Sakai has a broad, strongly engaged community. The recent transition to online education has demonstrated how valuable online conversation is to our learning experiences. Unfortunately, faculty are not enamored with Sakai's forums tool, so projects like Piazza had become increasingly important even before the pandemic. Their use increased dramatically during last year's higher education pivot to online instruction. When Piazza changed its business model in 2020, we at Duke took the opportunity to evaluate some competitive products like Ed Discussion and Campus Wire. At the same time, we began the development of an entirely new discussion tool within Sakai. Our first goal was to replace Piazza with a research-driven Q&A tool. Our eventual goal is to replace the current discussion forums with a tool designed to better meet our community's needs and facilitate meaningful, compelling learning conversations. To build a new tool from the ground up, we brought together a wide variety of stakeholders, students, instructors, teaching assistants, LMS administrators, user experience designers, and vendors. We dove deeply into pedagogical research and leveraged modern web development technologies. And we asked our primary users, instructors, and students to provide input and feedback at every stage of the process. This holistic approach to course discussions aims to make them strongly aligned with both user needs and pedagogical best practices. Hannah will go more into more detail about this. I think so. Um, so on this slide, you can see some, but not all of the research categories we explored relating to online discussion. By exploring topics as diverse as gamification and social media, we sought to gain a holistic understanding of effective online discussions. We centered pedagogical research from the beginning of this process, initially collecting, reviewing, and summarizing about 70 articles. From there, we crafted 42 online discussion design recommendations directly tied to the findings of about 50 articles. At the heart of every recommendation is the understanding that user experience plays a key part in not just using a tool, but learning itself. We are in the process of connecting these research recommendations with other forms of data to see where instructors, graduate and undergraduate student needs align with the findings from teaching and learning scholarship. For version one, we worked with a group of six instructors from across schools and disciplines at Duke who provide sustained in consultation on this process. We hope to expand our faculty group with doctors from social sciences and humanities for version two. As we began the process of designing the new discussion tool, we collected user stories from faculty. Once we had our recommendations from pedagogical research, we presented these recommendations to Duke instructors to see what overlapped with their needs and what questions we had not yet asked. Additionally, we have with our findings, graduate and graduate focus groups that we've conducted and asked for their reflections. The faculty themselves pushed for us to consider how to build values
Well, it looks like Hannah may have dropped off. I'm sorry. I can uh, continue going on with uh, her part of the presentation, though. Um, the faculty themselves pushed for us to consider how to build values into the tool, spurring our team to integrate these questions into our design and research methodologies. We are coding each user story based on values underlying each action and, pictured on this slide, you can get a peek of our workflow in Airtable. We plan to run a values exercise with faculty this fall. To complement the work we were doing with our faculty group, we conducted several focus groups with undergraduate and graduate students, in addition to conducting user testing of prototypes with students and faculty. After completing initial interviews with two student interns to gain some valuable background information about their use of different discussion tools at Duke, we recruited undergraduate students for three one-hour focus groups. We kept these groups relatively small at three to seven participants, and we intentionally recruited students from a variety of disciplines. In total, we spoke to 18 undergraduates from Duke and Duke Kushan University in China about their experience with Sakai forums, Piazza, and online discussion in general. Students were compensated for their time with Amazon gift cards. The focus groups were held via Zoom and included several formats. We broke up the group into smaller groups based on their experience with Sakai forums and or Piazza and asked them questions about their use of these respective tools. Then we encouraged them to use Jamboard to identify what they liked and disliked about each tool. Here you can see one group's feedback on Sakai forums and Jamboard. We also had larger group discussions about the tools, the online discussion experience in general, and related topics, including privacy and gamification. And for the graduate student groups, we specifically asked a section on values and pedagogy. We specifically added a section on values and pedagogy. The focus group methodology was designed by Bendy Fagg, a user experience researcher here at Duke, who is part of the project team. And now let's talk about usability testing. We performed usability testing for several prototypes with both faculty and students. We also sought out feedback from the larger Sakai community, including state schools such as Oregon Health and Science University and community colleges such as Durham Technical Community College. We used the feedback from these tests to change features in the tool to be more intuitive and user-friendly. For example, while some instructors were interested in, in including upvoting, some initial student feedback suggested that upvoting was confusing. Either they hadn't heard of it before, or they weren't sure when to use it. So we made it an optional setting that instructors could turn on if it fit their course. Another important example is that people wanted to highlight important posts for future viewing. So we created an option called My List. But testing suggested that no one understood what My List meant, and they confused it with pinning. So we switched to bookmarking and used the familiar star icon to demarcate it from pinning in the second prototype. And the next round of testing showed it was very intuitive. As you can see, feedback and usability results drove and continued to drive development of the tool. In designing this tool, we asked ourselves, where do the pedagogical research, student, and instructor needs overlap? We'll provide three examples of these features that came from a strong convergence of these three areas of inquiry. Tagging is important to both students and instructors in keeping posts organized, and pedagogical research suggested to us that discussion forum organization needed to allow users to find relevant material easily, rather than relying on just chronology. On this slide, you can see some example tags from Ed Discussion and Piazza. Sakai Forums does not currently support tagging posts. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of our sample tagging options in the Conversations tool. Instructors can edit tags for the course to make sure the organizational flow fits the needs of the course. Instructors, undergraduate, and graduate students discuss the need for a safe space in which to conduct discussion. 
Following recommendations from both user feedback and pedagogical research, we drew upon popular discussion platforms such as Discord for ideas such as community rules. On this slide, you can see an example of community discussion guidelines instructors can set up for individual courses using Sakai Conversations. Students must agree to these guidelines before participating. Sakai Forums, featured on this slide, allows you to customize permissions roles. Due to the varying nature of instructor, TA, student, and other roles at Duke, user research reflected a need for granular permissions to remain and for there to be clarity among these roles. And pedagogical research told us that there was a need to distinguish clearly between teaching assistant and instructor abilities. Pictured on this slide, you can see how Sakai Conversations allows each course site to customize each individual role, providing maximum pedagogical flexibility. And is Hannah back? I am back. Excellent. Uh, Hannah will briefly discuss our lingering questions and future plans. So what questions remain based on our research? Firstly, we value student privacy, but what should we show instructors to help them measure their pedagogy? Another topic in need of consideration is gamification. Gamification can increase student motivation if integrated into a tool properly, but how should we approach this? And should it involve a wholesale consideration of Sakai as a gamified learning management system? Pedagogical research and focus groups reveal that emojis would be helpful in building community, but some instructors are hesitant to use them. And there are questions about what emojis would be best suited for course discussion. So, as well as tackling those open questions, uh, we have several next steps planned for this tool. The Conversations Beta launched with Duke in early August, and we plan to gather feedback from early adopters to use this to improve the next version. We are working to prioritize version two goals, which include thread discussions, grading and rubrics, and notifications. Additionally, we are in the process of finalizing what team will like working on version two will look like, including our faculty partners. So um, thank you so much um, for your attention today. Uh, thank you for working with me as I go through audio issues. Um, and thank you to the organizers. Uh, we look forward to your questions. If you have any further feedback for us after today's session, don't hesitate to reach out to Learning Innovation and you can find our email, uh, learninnovation at duke.edu on this final slide. So thank you again. Yes, thank you. And uh, we'll be happy to take questions in the chat. That seems like the um, easiest space for that to happen. Of course, if people don't have questions, um, we can all go to lunch, but I mean, we still have questions that we're dealing with here, so I would totally understand if you all did. Ah, oh, Chris, thank you. Um, to some extent, this work was sponsored by the university um, in the sense that the university, I believe, um, well, it paid for our for Hannah's time and mine to participate in this since this was part of our work duties. And I believe it contributed um, some money towards the development of the tool. But a lot of money is actually coming from Longsight because uh, Longsight is a, um, major player in the Sakai community. And for a long time, uh, the Sakai community as a whole has wanted to move past forums. So they were willing to um, kick in a fair bit. And, and I'll add that some of the specific work that we mentioned, like the focus groups and the student usability testing was directly compensated, like the students were directly compensated by Longsight. Yes. 
there's university rules around who can give who money and um, by working with long site we uh, had a different angle that we could use there. Are there any other questions? You're welcome. Uh, Ladner asked if there are other institutions that might be interested in replicating or implementing this work on their campuses. Um, if by this work you're referring to this tool, uh, we've already contributed it back to the Sakai community. That's part of um, what was involved in Longsite um, helping to fund it. And so it will be available for other institutions to use uh, with, I believe, the next version of the Sakai LMS. Um, there, Sakai in general has a history of various institutions who really want to see a change in the LMS um, going off and working either in small groups or with long site or other vendors to create um, the change they want to see in the world, if you will. Because Sakai is an open source LMS, uh, that makes it relatively easy I won't say easy, I'm not a coder and understand it's difficult, but it makes it um, something that you can do without running into licensing issues and whatnot. So um, there's a tradition of people saying, we want X to happen and making X happen. That's one of the upsides to working with an open source learning management system. Thank you. And anyway, I will add to that, Heather, that um, one of the things that we are thinking about in future versions of the tool is making conversations available to communities and universities that they don't use Sakai as an LMS. Yeah, there is a bit of a movement to sort of disaggregate functionality from within LMSs where you can just say, I want to be able to do X whether it is have asynchronous conversations or um, other things and being able to contribute the tool beyond the LMS would help support that. Are there any other questions? Okay, someone is typing. You are welcome. Thank you for coming to listen. Okay, well, we have seven minutes left, I believe, in our allotted time, but if there aren't any more questions, we can, as the previous speaker said, enable bio breaks and um, let people get ready for the next session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to listen to us. And if, again, if anyone has any questions or wants to discuss the project further, uh, please reach out to us at learninginnovation at duke.edu. And I have a great rest of your conference. Thank you, everyone.